فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم So go to the kitab by Ibn Hazm رحمه الله مراتب الإجماع لكاء الشفاء by قاضي عياض Go to the kitab al-Iqnaa al by Ibn Ibn Qattan and you will find Ijma' not Sukuti. There's two types of Ijma'. Ijma' Sukuti is when one person says something and the rest are quiet about it. It's to call the silence consent. Because they look at him and they don't say anything. They don't oppose him. The fact they're silent, they say that this silence is a form of acceptance so they've all agreed on this. Because if they didn't agree, they would have spoke against it. No, 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 no. This one's the Qat'i. I mean, everybody's clearly stated that the Prophet ﷺ. Every single person, generations after generations, they all transmitted to each other that Nabiullah Muhammad is the final prophet. Based on the ayah and based on this hadith, which is mutawatir. It's mutawatir. So it's an ijma' which is qat'i. It's mut the, the ayah, we have an ayah. We have a hadith which is mutawatir. And we have ijma' qat'i. So those three has solidified for us. That this is not something we can't discuss. We can't open discussion based on it. Ah, we can't open discussion based on it. Um, wa khatamu wa khatamu Muhammadun balla ghari sala tarabbihi. Nabi Allah Muhammad conveyed the message that was upon him. Wa nasr ali khalqi, and he was sincere in his advice to his creation. Wa lam yamut, and he did not die. Hatta bayyan li nasi dinahum until he clarified the religion to the people. That's when he died. When he died, he conveyed everything that was on him. In other words, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينها. Today your religion has been complete on you. The blessing has been established onto you, and Allah has become pleased for Islam to be your religion. And the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, Abdullah, a hadith which Amr ibn al-As narrated, which is Sahih Muslim. Amr ibn al-As, it's Sahih Muslim. إنه لم يكن نبي قبلي. There was no prophet before me. إلا كان حقا عليه أن يدل أمته على خير ما يعلمه لهم. There was no prophet before me except it was obligatory on him to convey to his people any good that he knows for them. وينذرهم and to also warn them of every evil that he knows that's out there. وينذرهم شر ما يعلمه لهم. So the prophet is saying every prophet that was his job. We our job is to come out and say this is good. Do it. For us, until we do that, and we tell you every single good there is, and that we tell you to come with it, and we tell you to stay away from every evil, what well, the scholars they say, the scholars they say, the Prophet explained the evil even in its intrinsic, in details. Hudayf was there. What was he saying? كان الناس يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخير وكنت أسأل عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني. عرفت الشر لا للشر ولكن لتوقيه ومن لم يعرف الشر من الخير يقع فيه. He all wanted to know the evil. And this is exactly what the Prophet did when he climbed the Utum من أطام المدينة. And he said إني أرى الفتن خلال بيوتكم كمواقع القطر. When he climbed the big building, he said I can see the fitna going into your households. The way, the way when the rain where it drops, I see all of it. The Prophet ﷺ, he warned and he conveyed everything that was upon him. ولذلك العلامة ابن حزم so I brought you an ayah from the Quran اليوم أكملت لكم also the hadith which is in Sahih Muslim من حديث عمر بن العاص also إجماع that the Prophet conveyed everything. ابن حزم in his كتاب مراتب الإجماع he says اتفقوا they all unanimously agreed upon أنه منذ مات النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقد انقطع الوحي وكمل الدين واستقر he said they agreed, ulama have agreed. That when, since the Prophet ﷺ died, the revelation is over. No mystic Sufi can come up to you and say to you, Oh Allah, Allah is talking to me. Yeah? Or oh, says, which they always do, Haddathana fulan an fulan anana. Haddathani qalbi an rabbi. I got the shortest chain. My heart told me from Allah. La la la, in al wahi. This is kufra and ridda. The person who's talking, talking to you is qalbi al shaytani. It's not qalbi al rabbi. Allah is not the one talking to you. It is shaitan who is sending revelation onto you. So, um, so revelation is over. This is ijma'ah. Also, the religion is complete. Since the revelation is over, the religion is complete. This is a unanimous agreement, Ibn Hazm is saying. So if the religion is over and is complete, 
What is this that you're trying to bring into the religion? If the religion is complete, if that day when the ayah came down and it's saying to us, Oh people, this is what I'm pleased with. Where does yours come in? Allah said, this is, what I, this is the blessing that Allah was talking about. That night, that day, Yawm Arafah, the day of Arafah when the ayah came down, which is the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, the day before Eid, Dhul Adha, where does Mawlid al-Nabawi, or the celebration of Islam al-Mi'raj, where does it fall into this? Muhim. Very important, this question. Also, Abu Ishaq al-Shatibi, in his Kitab al-Itisam, he says, وَثَبَتَ أَنَّ النَّبِيَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَا لَمْ يَمُتْ حَتَّى أَتَى بِبَيَانِ جَمِيعِ مَا يَحْتَجُ إِلَيْهِ فِي أَمْرِ فِي أَمْرِ الدِّينِ وَالدُّنْيَا The Prophet did not die except he clarified everything worldly or religiously affairs. The religious and worldly affairs. وَهَذَا And this is لَا مُخَالِفَ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ This is an issue أهل السنة have differed on. Two people transmitted the ijma' for you. So it's very important that one keeps this in mind. The Prophet ﷺ conveyed everything. Now, then the Shaykh goes on to say, وَلَا يُؤْمِنُ أَحَدٌ One is not a believer. حَتَّى يُحِبَّهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ أَشَدَّ مِنْ مَحَبَّتِهِ لِلْأَبِ وَالْإِبْنِ وَالنَّفْسِ وَغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ That one is not a believer. Until what? Until he loves the Prophet ﷺ more than his own children, more than his own parents, more than yourself. And more than anything, you love him more, alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is what is from the hadith Sahih Muslim in Hadith Anas ibn Malik. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين. That you're not a true believer until I become more beloved to you than your child, than your parents, and to every single person out there, everyone, including yourself. ولذلك عمر he came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Umar came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Hadith Sahih al-Bukhari That he said, Ya Rasulullah La'anta ahabbu ilayya min kulli shayin You are more beloved to me than anybody You are more beloved to me than anyone Illa min nafsi except myself Faqala lahu al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet said to him La, no Umar Waladhi nafsi biyadi I swear by the Lord In which my soul is in his hand Hatta akuna ahabbu ilayka min nafsik Until I become more beloved to you than your own self فَقَالَ لَهُ عُمَرُ Then Umar responded by saying فَإِنَّهُ الْآنَ Right now I love you more then. Now I love you more. لَأَنْتَ You are أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ نَفْسِي You are more beloved to me now than myself. فَقَالَ لَهُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ The Prophet then said to him الْآنَ يَا عُمَرُ Now you have This is the Iman. This is the Iman. And my beloved brothers and sisters The loving of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم necessitates وَمَحَبَّتُ صلى الله عليه وسلم the loving of the Prophet necessitates what? That you obey him. You follow him. You stay away from that which he prohibited you from. Alayhi salatu wasalam. The person who claims, تَعْصِي الْإِلَاهَ وَأَنْتَ تَزْعُمُ حُبَّهُ هَذَا لَعَمْرُكَ فِي الْقِيَاسِ الشَّنِيعُ لَوْ كَانَ حُبُّكَ صَادِقًا لَأَطَعْتَهُ إِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَا يُحِبُّ مُطِيعُ You disobey Allah and his messenger. And then you claim their love. Wallahi, that's something that the mind cannot digest. Verily, the one who loves one, he what? If you love somebody, then what would you do? You would obey them. You would obey them. If you love somebody and there's love of yours or love for them is in you, you will see that you will listen to them. You will follow them. You will mimic them and imitate and act the way they do, right? So when you say, I loved Allah and His Messenger, but then your limbs are not doing it, then there's deficiency in this heart, in this love of yours. There's a deficiency here now. There's a deficiency in it. So, وَقَدْ خَصَّهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِالْمَقَامِ الْمَحْمُودِ Another thing that the Shaykh mentions, which is Allah specified the Prophet with the stage, the praiseworthy station. الْمَقَامِ الْمَحْمُودِ This is the station that the Prophet ﷺ wanted. وَالشَّفَاعَةِ لِأَهْلِ الْبَحْشَرِ and also the Prophet ﷺ, he specified, uh, sorry, Allah Taala also specified him with what? وَالشَّفَاعَةِ لِأَهْلِ الْمَحْشَرِ In the intercession for the people of the Day of Judgment. For what? 
ليخلصوا من ضيق المحشر ويشرع في فصل القضاء. The Prophet ﷺ is going to do more than one intercession. The first one is, oh Allah, judge between your creation. This one, the first one, the disbelievers and the believers all enter it. He goes, Ya Rab, judge between this creation. Just even the disbeliever. Alhamdulillah. Yahdikumullah wa the evidence for the maqam al Mahmud is what? Asa an yab'athaka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda. Surah Al-Isra ayah 79. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will resurrect you the station of maqam mahmud, the praiseworthy station. What is the maqam al Mahmud? What is it? The maqam al Mahmud is the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the sinners. From his nation. This is the view of the, of the majority of the scholars. From the Salaf and the Khalaf. And their view is strengthened by the hadith of Abu Hurairah, عنه, which is in what? Which is in Sunan al Tirmidhi. And Ahmed narrated in his Musnad, and Sheikh Nasir authenticated, uh, and also so does, so does Al Imam Muqbil ibn Hadi al Wadi in his Kitab Al Shafa'a. He also strengthens it, which is. The Prophet has said when he recited the ayah, Asa an yab'athaka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda, he said, huwa al-maqam alladhi ashfa'u li ummati fi. It is the station where I will intercede for my people. And also the likes of it was narrated from Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, which is in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, marfu'an, Albani authenticated it, and Imam Muqbil also classified it to be Hassan. Also, Ka'ab ibn Ujrah narrated it as well. So three companions that narrated it, Abu Hurairah narrated it, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri narrated it, and Ka'ab ibn Ujrah narrated it in Musnad Ahmed, Albani authenticated in his Silsil Hadith Sahiha, exactly page, uh, the fifth volume, page 400 and something. Something that you find it. Naam. So, وَأَسْعَدُ النَّاسِ بِشَفَاعَتِهِ Who is the one that's going to be the most happiest for the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ? مَنْ قَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The one who says لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ خَالِصًا مِنْ قَلْبِهِ Sincerely from his heart. يُصَدِّقُ قَلْبُهُ لسانه ولسانه قلبه. The Sheikh says that his heart it, it backs up its limb and the limbs back up the heart. They are intact and they're working together. That's the person who's going to enjoy the shafa'a and the intercession of the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام the most. That is the person who's going to. Then the Sheikh says وعلامة محبتك له صلى الله عليه وسلم شدة حرصك على طاعتي فيما بلغه عن ربي عز وجل and the sign the sign of your love for him صلى الله عليه وسلم is the excessive how much you strive in obeying him عليه الصلاة والسلام in everything which he conveyed to you from your Lord الله تبارك وتعالى then the Sheikh says والإيمان and also to believe in what بقدر الله that which Allah has destined for you you believe this is now the sixth pillar of Al-Iman, the sixth article of faith. Wal-Iman to believe in. Biqadarillahi that which Allah has destined for you. Believe it. What does it mean, believe in it? You believe Allah Ta'ala had destined this to take place for you. You believe it. Iman, which is Al-Jaz, Aqd, which is Jazim, this decision in your heart is strong. Allah, He's the one who did this for me. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. He did it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You believe it. فَقَدْ قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ كُلَّ مَا هُوَ كَائِنٌ Because Allah destines everything that's going to take place. Allah destines it. What's the evidence for that? Surah Al-Qamar, ayah 49. Allah says, إِنَّا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَاهُ بِقَدَرٍ Everything we created it on a destiny, on a qadr, time for it. Ah. So, believing it requires from you that you surrender to it, that you surrender, and that you get rid of doubting it, doubting it. One of the arguments of these atheists is that, and this is something they adopted previously from the Greek logicians, huh? which is what? If God exists, then why is evil taking place? And this is a shubha ohami bait al-ankabut. 
is a shubha aw ha min bayt al ankabut it is a doubt that is weaker than the web of the mosquito or the spider nothing laqid it's easy to respond to it and inshallah ta'ala when we do our series on atheism their shubuhat and answering it we will do that inshallah ta'ala then because allah tabarak wa ta'ala everything he has done he's done it with wisdom how many times have people thought this thing was bad for them but it turned out to be good for them how many times have you thought this is bad, this is it, it's the evil, ah, oh, it hit me, can't get worse. But then it turned out to be what? It turned out to be, it turned out to be uh, a good thing for you. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Hadith Sahih Muslim, in Hadith Abdullah ibn Umar, he heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, كُلَّ الشَّيْءٍ بِقَدَرِ اللَّهِ Everything is with what? Is with the qadr of Allah. حَتَّى الْكَيِّسُ وَالْعَجْزِ even the laziness and everything, the ability to do something and to go forward, it's all from Allah. The Prophet said, If you have, the Prophet said, the mountain of Uhud of gold, and then you go and fakhtaw fi sabillah, you give it out for the sake of Allah. Ma qabilahu Allah minka, Allah will never accept that from you. حتى تؤمن بالقدر until you believe in the قدر أو كعب وتعلم أن that you know أن ما أصابك that which has afflicted you لم يكن ليخطئك it wasn't meant to miss you وأن ما أخطأك that which missed you لم يكن ليصيبك it wasn't meant to happen for you وإن متى and if you die upon other than that وإن متى على غير هذا دخلت النار you will enter the hellfire إمام أحمد narrated in Abu Dawood so this is what it is this is the essence of it that everything that happens to you happens to you because it was meant to happen to you. And every, anything that wasn't meant to happen to you and then you strove for and it never happened, it was never meant to happen. The Qadrullah, the Allah, it's in his hand. And wallahi, the nation who are most depressed is those who place everything in their own hands and say, I am the one who's going to run everything. The fact that you can give something to Allah, which is already his, and you say Allah is the one who's going to control this, it takes that stress off you. It takes that panicking off you. And then when you surrender, your heart becomes even more at ease. So, believing in the qadr is of your benefit. It's of your, it's of your benefit. ثُمَّ بَيَّنَ لِعِبَادِهِ مَا يُقَرِّبُهُمْ إِلَيْهِ وَمَا يُبْعِدُهُمْ عَنْهُ Then Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He clarified. That which will get them closer to Him and that which will distance them from Him. Allah clarified everything that will get us closer to Him. And He also told us every single thing that will distance us from Him. Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 176, Allah says, يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Allah, will, Allah clarifies for you and makes it clear for you. Ah, أَن تَظِلُّوا to be misguided. وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِمْ Allah clarifies everything for you so you, can't, so, you don't, so you don't become misguided. He does that for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He hasn't left you in the dark. And just said, you know what? You managed to... Come to the conclusion yourself. Get to the uh, answers for your own self. لا. You were guided and you were told everything which you need to do. كما أرشدهم بعقولهم إلى ما ينفعهم في دنياهم وما يضرهم فيها. The same way Allah guided them intellectually to that which will benefit them in their dunya and that which harm them. Allah gave you a brain. You won't throw yourself into a fire. You know it burns and you know it hurts if you go into it. Who gave you that mind to know that? No one's ever given you a class that the fire burns and it doesn't. But you know that. He gave you that aqal and that brain for you to know what can benefit you and what can harm you. He's given that to you. This is an intrinsic, innate ability. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Currently now that I'm doing linguistics, I'm studying linguistics, one of the things they, st they speak about is the theories of language and how language is gained, right? Sa'ad would know, he studied it. One of the strongest arguments, or the strongest argument is language is innate ability. Well, that's why they use the term acquire language, where they, and they don't use the word learn language. So the acquiring of language, meaning the speaking, is nothing that a child has to go to school for. All you do is you find that the child is speaking. Whereas the writing and the reading and huh? The child actually requires what? Who's placed that in him? That itself shows something. 
All you know is you find out is your child's actually speaking to you now, it's conversing with you. He understands what you're telling him. He knows his name from all the names that are out there. He knows this is his name. This is what? It's an innate ability that's built inside. Allah placed a chip in the brain of the human to know to speak. No, you can have a parrot for the rest of your life. It will not be able to speak. Except that which you taught it. The child, wallahi I see it in my own children. They follow the English grammar in words they've never heard they will apply it. That's the, that's the power here. Yeah. They will try to apply, this is the thing that no parrot can ever do. Parrot will only say what you taught him. Children will get a new word and they'll try to add the ED to the end of that word. Even if it's not a word that can use an ED. Like for example, my kids tried to say he eated instead of he ate. But how do they know that the ED shows a past tense? I've never taught them that. This is innate ability. They've learned the pattern of the language. Does it make sense? Noam Chomsky tries to say that the language is a universal, universal grammar, which every language, there's one common thread that runs between all of them. The point is that the child knows this. Who's done this? It shows a creator, Khaliq, that created them. Allah has given them that brain, this aqal, that benefits them in their worldly affairs. My child is born today. If I try to get him next to, close to a fire, he'll start crying. Try it on your daughter. The minute she feels the heat, she'll cry. And she wouldn't like it. No one's ever told her that a fire can burn. She's never taken school on that. So this is what? That which benefits them and that which harms them. And then Allah also placed in them to be mumakkin on this earth and the ability He gave to them. He gave you ability. You're able to do this. He didn't take physical ability away from you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَالْإِنسَانُ مُتَمَكِّنُ الْمُسْتَطِيعُ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُ وَيَكْفُرُ Allah gave you as a human the, 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 the ability, the strength to believe or the strength to disbelieve. He gave that to you. But He also gave you the brain to know what's good for you and what's bad for you. And He also gave you the ability to obey or to disobey. And He also gave you the ability to strive to that which benefits you and to and the ability to strive to that which doesn't benefit you. He's given you the ability to all of that. فَمَنِ اخْتَارَ الْخَيْرَ Because he's given you the ability, he's going to question you for the ability. This is something he gave you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنِ اخْتَارَ الْخَيْرَ If you then choose the good with the ability he gave you, فَهُوَ سَعِيدٌ وَفَّقٌ You will be happy and you're going to gain prosperity in the hereafter. وَمَنِ اخْتَارَ الشَّرَّ فَهُوَ الشَّقِيُّ الْمُوَبَّقُ أَمَا الْمُوبَق if you take the evil, then you're a destroyed, evil individual. And Allah destined this one, the good and the evil. Allah destined the good and Allah destined the evil. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala lahu al He has a proof, he has a wisdom. The great, noble, high, vast ability in that which he has done and that which he has left behind. Well, so what's the Sheikh talking about? Sheikh's talking about a concept here which is very important, which is the concept considered as خلق أفعال العبادي. The actions of the creation is it created. Are you with me? The Sheikh mentions some terms that we need to, we need to become familiar with, which is the issue of the temkin. Tamkeen here means <coughs> it means القدرة, ability والاختيار, and the choosing. You have the ability to choose. You have strength. He's given the strength to you. Write that down. One. You got strength. And he's also given you the choice to choose the actions that you want to choose. وأن العبادة فاعلون حقيقة, and that you are literally one that's going to do something. وَاللَّهُ خَالِقُ أَفْعَالِهِمْ And Allah is the one who created your actions. But the slave has what? He has ability in your actions. And you have a will in your actions. And Allah is the one who created your ability. And Allah wa is the one who created your, your, will, your will. They create you. 
The word muwabbakh, it means, as I said before, al-halik, the destroyed one. Because of his sins. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَقُولِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ النَّارًا أَحَاطَ بِهِمْ سُرَاتِقُهَا Say to them, Muhammad, the truth is from your Lord. Any one of you wants to believe, go believe. Any one of you who wants to disbelieve, then disbelieve. But remember, I've prepared a severe punishment for those who go against the command of Allah. So here is that concept, and I inshallah ta'ala hope to go through this concept of khalq af'al al-ibad, more in details, more explanation in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, khalq af'al al-ibad. It's better that we leave that topic for there, inshallah ta'ala. There are other more, more points that we can mention, but for today, inshallah, we'll conclude there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong, فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَانِ مِنْهُ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشْهَدُ أَلَّا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ